all right yo guys welcome back so in this video we'll be looking at differentiation and this time we're giving an enclosure which is over here and according to this information it says the enclosure a b c d e a as shown in this figure consists of a rectangle so we've got a rectangle of length y and this length here of course we can deduce is consists of a rectangle joined to an equilateral triangle so this equilateral we know this hence we've got 60 degrees on each side all, all angles are the same and, and the lengths are the same we have a sector FEA which is over here so this is 160 this would be 120 degrees with radius x meters and center f so the length it, radius is x meaning this length is also x hence the whole length is 2x the points B, F and E lie on a straight line with FE equals x okay find the meter square the exact area of the sector FEA Oh, so this is quite easy. So if we've got 120 degrees, so the exact area of the sector is simply, you know, you take the fraction of a circle, so 120 over 360 times the area of a circle, pi r squared. And the radius is x, so pi x squared. This value here is just simply a third. So the answer would just be pi x squared over 3. Okay, all right, that's A done. A was easy. Now for part B, given that BC equals Y meters, we know that, established, and the area of the enclosure is 100 meters squared. Okay, so the area equals uh, 1,000 meters. Show that you can get this expression. Well, I think this is quite straightforward. So let's, let's have a crack at this, guys. So to find the area, we simply need to find the area of each different shape and sum them up. So the area of the rectangle is easy, so we've got base times height, so 2x times y is just... 2xy for the rectangle plus area of the sector we found out was pi x squared over 3 plus area of an equilateral triangle is just simply a half base times height so or we can do the half ab rule so we take two sides and take the angle between so half ab sine 60 so half x times x x squared sine 60 and sine 60 is actually root 3 over 2 so we can take a note there and we know the and also recall that the whole area equals a thousand so all of this equals a thousand now all we do is just simply rearrange and get the answer so by making y the subject we want to subtract all of this across and then divide by 2x so y equals a thousand minus all of these terms so minus so i can so minus what do we have pi x squared over 3 minus so yeah let's simplify this part so we've got half times root 3 over 2 would be root 3 over 4 x squared good and divide it all by 2x therefore simplifying each term 1000 over 2x is 500 over x minus simplifying this we're going to have pi x squared over so the x's cancel out so this x goes and this x squared goes so we're left with pi x over 6 minus and again same thing we're going to get root 3 we cancel 1x root 3 x over 6 and notice that they factorize in this format so what we could do multiply up and down by 4 so we get 4 and then times this by 4 to get 4 pi over 24 and on the right side we need to get 3 root 3 to get 3 root 3 multiply up and down by 3 or is it let's have a look oops this, this should have been 8 4 times 2 is 8 so multiply up and down by 3 kind of lucky we had that so hence we should get the desired equation which is y equals 500 over x minus and this becomes 4 pi x over 24 minus 3 root 3 over 24 and hence factorizing this like they did will give you exactly what they wanted over 24 4 pi plus 3 root 3 voila so not so terrible but it's just a case of knowing your algebra okay so we're done for this part let's move on okay guys here we go part c so it tells us that hence show that the perimeter 
of p meters of the enclosure is given by p equals 1000 of x plus the term you see right here. Now, how do we get now? Perimeter is quite easy. We just look at the shape here and pretty much stack the values. So, so let's go from the top. So knowing what we know, we know that this length is y as given. This is 2x. We have another y here. Now we have an arc length. and We know that this length is x. So knowing that this is the arc length, we know that the angle here is 120 degrees. To calculate the arc length, quite straightforward, is simply the, um, the circumference Time, it's a fraction of the circumference more or less and a fraction of the circumference here is 120 degrees over 360 times the circumference is 2 pi or 2 pi x and remember this was a third so therefore the circumference the arc length is just 2 thirds pi x easy so this is 2 over 3 pi x cool now just add them all up so therefore P equals, um, do, do, do. Uh, what did I say? P equals, oh yeah, yeah, so P equals, so adding up the y's, we got 2y plus we got 3 lots of x's plus 2 over 3 pi x. And in this case, notice that this equation, the P equation here, has no y, so we just replace y with our equation we previously found, and thus we should have. P equals 2 multiplied by replacing y, 500 over x. So this is going to be one long, long ass equation. Oh crap. Minus x over 24 times 4 pi plus 3 root 3. Close bracket plus these last two guys plus 3x plus 2 thirds pi x. Okay, let's summarize this. So notice that they just this some quick maths here. So this became over 12. So in other words, we need to we'll end up getting a two x here. The rest of the terms inside are more or less the same. Okay. Well, all we can do is pretty much expand this. So let's expand this all one time. Okay. So inside here, well, we're going to ignore this. Also expand the the square bracket part. Let me change the square bracket not to mix this up. So we get two times 500 x. So we get thousand over x. Minus 2 times these guys, 2x over 24. Copy the rest. Plus 3x plus 2 thirds pi x. Okay, so they probably want us to solve the, expand the right hand side. So let's just, let's just focus on this part now, yeah? And try and lock in the same bracket. So we're going to have 1000 over x. Minus, let me multiply this out. So we're going to have... 8 pi over 24x plus 6 root 3x over 24 plus 3x plus 2 thirds pi x. Collecting everything, notice that all have in terms of x. What do we have in common? So we've got 8 pi a over 24 plus 2 thirds pi x. So you put on the calculator or collecting terms, you should get, and, yeah, and also collect terms here. We should also have, um, yeah, so this and this will give us pi over 3, this term and, yep, yeah, so this term and also this term, adding them up, so we get, so 6 over 24, simplifying this is a quarter, so we're going to get plus a quarter root 3 plus 3 bracket x. I should also add an x here as well. And then we put 1000 of x minus all of this. And can we get it? Yes, we can. I believe we can. So let's try this out. So therefore, we've got 1000 over x. And this question, they don't really have to make it long. Equals plus pi over 3x. And now we just have to expand these terms. Plus root 3 over 4x plus 3x and I can do this all in one go okay so I just open up a fresh page because I've pretty much run out of space here so what do we have so let's continue where we left off so our perimeter now is given by this from the previous one we want to try and put into this format so the left side is fine 
what we could do is put all of this over 12 that's the first thing so the put made this entire fraction over 12 so we're gonna have a thousand over x plus multiply this term here up and down by 4 will give us 4 pi over 3 over 12 x plus multiply this term here by 3 up and down so we have 3 root 3 over 12 x plus this term here up and down by 4 we're going to have 12 x over 4 yeah just making sure this is oops 12 x no we're going to multiply it by face by 12 obviously so it'll be 3 times yep and then times again by another 4 uh, you know what I mean guys multiply up and down here by 12 so we're going to have phase 6 x over 12 oh, damn what's with this speed yep and that's it now we just factorize all this guys so therefore at long last we have a thousand over x plus x over 12 factorize x over 12 and all of them and we're left with 4 pi here we're left with plus 3 um, this should have been a negative sign we're left with minus 3 with 3 over 12 but I'm going to put in their order just for the sake of completing this question okay voila done so now let's just move on to part D now yeah this was a long question alright so part D now at last that question was hell part C so here it tells us to use calculus ie to differentiate to find the minimum value of P give the answer to the nearest meter so in the purpose of this question, we will need to differentiate this equation and solve it and set the equation to zero and find the value of x. For that value of x, we're going to assume that it's minimum and, um, and to, of course to prove it, we need to do part e for that. Substitute, find the value of x, substitute this equation and find the value of p, which will give us the minimum value of p. So here we go. So we're finding dp over dx, the first derivative. Of course, before that, it's best we rewrite this top equation into the standard format. So here we should have p equals 1000 x minus 1 plus, and the rest of the terms are actually fine. Okay, that's enough. So let's have a go. So differentiating x, 1000 x minus 1, draw the power minus, we're going to have minus 1000 x to the negative 2. Now differentiating the right hand side here, you just differentiate, you just treat the rest of these terms as constant. So you're left with plus. 4 pi plus, I don't know my pen, plus 36 minus 3 root 3 over 12. X just vanishes. We set this equation to 0 and plus 1000 across, so we're going to be left with 4 pi plus 36 minus 3 root 3 over 12 equals 1000, and we can change it back to the standard format over 1000x squared. From this all in the calculator, we should have x and times an x squared across. We're going to have x squared equals a thousand divided by all this term in the calculator, which gives which gives us. I'll just tell you exactly what this gives us. Yeah, it gives us thousand over three point six one four. Write down six one four, and that's it. And then square root in this answer. This should give us a nice value of 16.63. Oh, good. So we're going to assume that this is the values. And again, this is plus minus, okay? So plus minus solution because you square root it. Now, we're going to put this back into the equation P. And therefore, this tells us that the minimum value P, so we go find the min P, would be, okay, so assuming we use the, the if we use a positive value, what happens? Assuming we use a positive value, we're going to get 1000 over this p value, let's call this um, x min. So this value is called x min. So we're going to put this in the calculator plus x min. So pretty much put this all in the calculator, okay? I'm not going to write the whole thing out. What does this give us? Well, this should give us exactly, it will give us to the nearest uh, meter 120 meters. Cool, not bad. If you chose a negative value, you just get minus 120, which of course you don't want. You want to use the positive value. And finally, let's do part A. Justify by further differentiation that the value P you have is a minimum. Well, that just means we need to differentiate once more. So find dP over dx squared. 
Okay, once this, this actually starts working, hence, let's take a second derivative. So we're gonna have um, where's my pen? So it'd be d2p over dx squared. So differentiate this original equation here once more. Dropping the power down, so we're gonna have minus two drop down will be two thousand x to the negative three, and this whole constant disappears. So we're left with this, and to show this minimum it needs to be positive. And yes, if you plug that the sixteen point six three, we're gonna basically get two thousand over sixteen point six cubed, which obviously with our calculator is positive. Hence, it is a minimum. Hence, the p we use is a minimum value. So P is minimum. That's it, guys. Hope this helps, and um, I'll catch you guys next time. Ciao for now. Bye.